Macmillan Audio presents Look Again by Lisa Scottolini. Read for you by Mary Stuart Masterson. Chapter 1 Ellen Gleason was unlocking her front door when something in the mail caught her attention. It was a white card with photos of missing children, and one of the little boys looked oddly like her son. She eyed the photo as she twisted her key in the lock, but the mechanism was jammed, probably because of the cold. Snow-encrusted SUVs and swing sets, and the night sky was the color of frozen blueberries. Ellen couldn't stop looking at the white card, which read, Have you seen this child? The resemblance between the boy and the photo. How was swimming, Con? Fine. Great. Connie put on her coat and flicked her ponytail out of the collar with a deft backhand. He was a little fish. She got her brown purse and packed tote bag from the window seat. Will, tell Mommy how great you did without the kickboard. Will pouted, a mood swing typical of toddlers and manic depressives. Connie zipped up her coat. Then we drew pictures, right? You told me Mommy liked horses. I drew it, Will said, cranky. I love my picture, sweetie. Ellen was hoping to stave off a kitty meltdown, and she didn't blame him for it. He was plainly tired, and a lot was asked of three-year-olds these days. She asked Connie. He didn't nap, did he? I put him down, but he didn't sleep. Too bad. Ellen hid her disappointment. If Will didn't nap, she wouldn't get any time with him before bed. Connie bent down to him. See you later. Will was supposed to say alligator, but he didn't. His lower lip was already puckering, Sarah was saying, and it reminded Ellen of why she'd always disliked her. Aggressiveness was an occupational hazard in journalism, and Sarah never knew when to turn it off. She said, They need news reporters with Iraq and the new administration. Why? It's not like we have somebody in the White House press room. Courtney shook her head. And it's our turn because they already cut in features. Remember Suzanne? She deserved it, Sarah said, and Ellen tossed away a paper towel, her stomach a clenched fist. Suzanne didn't deserve it. None of us deserves it. If it's news, it won't be me. It can't be, Sarah folded her arms. I'm too well-sourced in City Hall, and they know it. It'll be me, Courtney said, and Ellen turned to her, hating the sound of it. No, Court, they can't let you go. Yes, they can, and they will. Bet me. Courtney's gaze, devoid of eye makeup, looked resigned. Look, it is what it is. My uncle used to set hot type with linotype machines, and he and his friends lost their jobs when computers came. Her mind simply refused to go there. Does it get easier with time? No, it gets harder. How so? I think about all that I'm missing with them, all that time with each of them. Then I start to think that even when I get them back, I'll never be able to catch up. Susan paused, a stillness coming over her. I worry they won't remember me, that I'll be a stranger to them. But her father was looking reflective, pouring them a glass of tea. You were like that, too, just like that. When you were little, your face was so wide. I used to say you looked like a salad plate. Will's the same way. He gets it from you. Dad, he's adopted, remember? Oh, right. <laughs> Her father laughed. You're such a good mother, I always think you're his real mother. Ellen let that go, too. She usually felt like Will's real mother until someone told her she wasn't. But she knew what he meant. You got that mother instinct from your mother. You're every inch her daughter. That he's adopted, it doesn't matter. That's why we keep forgetting. It's like proof. Maybe you're right, Ellen nodded oddly grateful. But then again, Don Gleason could sell anybody anything.